You're right, mate. Why should I be terrified of this? <sighs> you, 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 with some justification. Because, yeah. how are wait, you in Florida? Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, happy good morning. It's nine o'clock here. Are you? Yeah, you should, you know, terrified's an interesting word because I am restrained at the racetrack when I get to talk to everybody because that is the nature of big TV, which is why I no, thought TV. it would be uh, quite fun to chat to the people I like uh, offline, if you like, but online, okay. away from the track, where I have no handlers. So, um, yeah. Well, we don't know what's going on below the waist. Yeah, you know what? If I could stand up and you could see, you know, I could be in I've speedos. No, I've got no pants on. That, that is what I was hoping for. I'm notorious, Ryan, for my, if you ask Calvin or Brian or Jamie, I'm notorious for the level of my preparation when it comes to the races. As in, not spectacular. I, I tend to go with the fact that I'm, I'm a man of intuition and right. uh, it's an excuse it's a british man's excuse for lack of preparation basically winging it man's excuse really yeah that's what it is so i thought why not get on the get on the horn and chat to a few people so uh first of all do you do you have any idea the chaos you caused in the booth when and with the announced team when you came on the scene because we always have this pre-season meeting when we'll go through the pronunciation of I can't even say it, pronunciation of certain people's names, and as you can imagine, we have we have those you know, Guatemalan drivers, you know, drivers from all over the world, and then there's you in the middle of it, and you should have heard the way we approached it, and That's of course it. I was the authority. I said, well, you know, he's going to be known as Dial Dial Dialziel, and and Calvin had his own, and Brian had his own. I think someone had to come down and ask you. Um, very French, Scottish right. name. Uh, very, I, I think originally it was French from what we understand. If you look back, but, um, I mean, even growing up in Scotland, the part of Scotland I grew up on or in, um, it was pretty common, but a lot of it was common because my, my dad owned a very well-known bakery business. Ah. And so we were, we had main street stores. Um, and so throughout kind of West Scotland, central Scotland, it wasn't that big a deal, but, you know, obviously racing and traveling, uh, it was a nightmare. It yeah. was a nightmare. And then the best thing that ever happened was they did a detective show on BBC called DL and Pascal. Oh. And I don't know why they chose DL and Pascal because there were two English cops. Okay. Um, and it's not an English name. No. So DL and Pascal became a pretty well-known show and that actually helped me out through all my kind of earlier karting days. Uh, and now I just used to be murdered at all times. Yeah, murdered, and people nothing you can do about it. And, and they spell it wrong, and they do this. Well, anyway, we 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 now have our own version, obviously, uh, of it, and we say it, I think kind of right for for the crowd. Um, but of course, it's interesting you should say bakers because after all, Franchitti, which sounds Italian, were, weren't they the ice cream family? They were, yeah, I think... Uh, they were the ice cream guys, right? The, the Frankitis, yeah. not necessarily Dario and Marino's dad, but the Frankitis were the guys who yeah. had the ice cream stalls. Yep. Uh, I think they had vans. I, I'm not sure if it was vans or stores, but yeah, Frankies. But, you know, Italian ice cream, that all makes sense. The, the, Scottish the, bakers, maybe not so much. Nor do Scottish racing drivers, let's face it. You, for the population, per capita, over history, some of the best drivers of the world... Uh, of our racing history have come from the little outcrop on the top of the island that we all England's share. England's hat. Pardon? England's hat. England's hat, exactly. Um, amazing, really. Where, why? Uh, when you think about it, I actually was thinking about it in the shower, which not the time to think about you. Shower. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, I wonder what happened. Imagine, you're all sitting up there. You know, doing what you do, all in your all in your skirts and everything. And then what happens is this: along came the Romans. You'd never even seen a wheel, right? And what happened? Did one of the old ancestors go, "Look at that chariot. That's a bit handy." Next thing, they're off, leaping around. Uh, the first Scot to get behind the wheel, so to speak. That's my theory on it. I have no idea. Uh, question that's asked a lot. Um, I mean, I know from from my own kind of personal upbringing we lived uh 
from the time I could really drive and start to drive and dad would let me drive, even though he shouldn't have, but if he'd had a couple of beers, I should take him home from the restaurant. Yeah. Um, we lived way in the country. And I, I think when you look at uh, where most of us, you know, whether it's Alan, Colin McRae, Colin McRae was one town along for me, like walking distance. Um, oh, this is so good place. And yeah, yeah. Good guy. Um, great family. But I think we just, we all grew up on these miserable roads miserable weather and generally driving piece of crap cars that uh we somehow managed to keep on the road most of us there was there's a couple of incidents that uh the guys could tell us about where we didn't keep them on the road yeah um, which i'm sure your dad would be able to repeat probably absolutely millimeter for millimeter um my brother had, was notorious for just generally taking my dad's cars and wrecking them um yeah my, my brother actually crashed one of my dad's cars picking them up at dinner one night um but they were drunk enough they didn't notice the fact that there was no headlights working. It's funny. Um, but I don't know. I, I think the roads have a lot to do with it. And I, I think the weather, as far as just the miserable conditions, weather, leaves, ice. Um, but I don't That's know. That's a good theory. It, it, you're, you're, I think you're spot on because think of Finnish people. Yep. Rally drive. I mean, those guys are sideways the whole time. Yeah. Um, Country with really only... You know, we had basically four go-kart tracks in the whole of Scotland. We had one racetrack, you know, it used to be two when Ingleston was around, but that was pretty much it. And, yeah. oh, so it I, must I, be I, quite good, though, because you, you can only really measure yourself against your peers, can't you, against your competition. But when you're in that sort of microclimate, uh, uh, as you say, four tracks and all the hot wannabe drivers, and karting was just like a thing that a lot of people got into out there, wasn't it? You must have been able to measure yourself against the competition quite quickly. The problem was you were you were measured against the competition quickly, and then you were measured measured against the legends ah. very quickly. And you know, I remember I was part of the same uh, karting team that both David Coulthard and Alan uh, were with. And so, from a young age, you know, then comparisons start getting made with those guys, guys that you idolize. Um, but what was always cool was, and, and I can remember this from pretty much everybody in the generation ahead of me, I remember at least once a month at each track, Dario or Alan or David Coulthard would come back and not just watch and hang out and autographs, like they were kind of hands on and wow. Alan for sure was one of the guys that helped me the most when it came to just technique. In fact, really? I used to huh. struggle in the past, I was never a good overtaker. And uh, I asked Alan for some advice one time, and he said, oh, it's easy. You just point to the inside and close your eyes. Uh, now we know. Now we know. Well, the, the thing is, don't forget, Alan, Alan can see that because he couldn't really see over the steering wheel. So, so that. He closed his eyes many times as well. And, and that, I mean, wow. Yeah, actually, if you think about it, there's just been, just been everybody, isn't it, who's been so good. So, but also, I imagine quite difficult to get out of there. You know what I mean? You've got all those great guys. To actually make the leap to get out is tough. Um, you know what it is? Uh, Scotland's a very, very proud country. Yeah. Uh, we're a proud nation who, you know, much like this stuff was going on a couple of years ago when they're, they're trying to have their own independence. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, they don't always, we don't always look at the big picture of things. Um, and even in the racing world, it's, you're almost kind of blacklisted a little bit when you you want to go overseas or you want to go down south to England and yeah. you know you, you think there'd be an initial amount of support behind you but there really isn't you know for okay. two or three years you you kind of have this wall against you where you leave you don't come back um, and uh, and you know, if you come back you better come back a hero yeah pretty much yeah you know it's like you, you leave and if it doesn't work out for you then you had your chance you know we're a small nation who we don't want to let people go. Well, you did go. You did make it. Do you know what I was thinking? It, 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 just a, a, It's interesting because I always think of you as a smiley, happy bloke, right? A lot of the photographs on, on your website, it, it's a very, it looks like a Glaswegian hard guy on, the, you know, a grumpy face. A lot of grumpy face. No, I'm Mr. Smiley. Yeah. The, the problem is, you know, a lot of the time uh, we don't really have a say in those kind of pictures yeah. that go up. And so people will always say to me, do you do your Twitter or do you do your Facebook? And uh, I do everything 100% nowadays because I used to get so much abuse from my friends and family when I first got on social media and they'd be like, 
they send me a picture of a stupid quote and be like, we know you didn't say that, so why are you wasting your time saying it? I was just looking at your, your Wikipedia, which, by the way, is interestingly devoid of any information. It's like, when I first looked at it, I went, he has a secret life as, a, as an agent because, because it is like just Raya. Yeah, I don't know who writes Personal that. details, none. It's useless, actually. Yeah, so, they are useless. But your website's good. Um, do you think you... Let's, let's jump to racing, racing. The, you were there in the champ car era, you, and you had, you had a mixed kind of bag there, really, didn't you? But it was a cool time to be in America's premier single-seater formula, wasn't it? It was a good time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think really up until the end of champ car there was nothing better yeah um you know for me i take nothing away from the skill of indie car drivers but it's not what car or champ car was it never will be i don't think um and, and i actually think you know in the couple of years i was there i was not a fan of the last generation car i thought the 2007 car was to me when i remember growing up and i came to the states because of dario and uh, you know, he was like, you got to come over here. It's a great time to be here. Yeah. And I remember back in like 2003, 4, 5, I would come over. Um, obviously, I was racing in, in Atlantics, but I would watch those cars with those motors. And I just thought they were the most aggressive things I've ever seen. And when I drove one, scared the absolute living crap out of me. Um, I mean, big horsepower, right? Big and... Big horsepower. Like, you know, we were... We were 850 on push to pass. Um, the cars were what 1,700 pounds. I mean, they were monsters. Um, but I just I think they lost a little bit of sight with it, which obviously was the kind of beginning of the end. But mm. yeah, I mean, I, I wish my only regret in, in racing life so far is that I didn't get you know an opportunity to be in a, a proper car and have it an actual. I had one good race. It was in the rain um, and. That was it. Equal does out a little bit, but in the dry, it was just it was a frustrating couple of years there. But uh, definitely wouldn't change it. I think it was just the the coolest form of motorsport there ever was. Well, in part two, we're going to talk to Ryan about the sort of scene of motorsport that he has pretty much uh, been a main player of for the last six or seven years, and of course that is sports car racing. So uh, click on the video and watch part two. <laughs> 